of course i'm a i i would i would think a lot of people here are familiar with my or are well aware of my interest and love for dance music specifically techno and you would know that you know going through a global pandemic one part of my life has been completely put on pause which is my ability to dj which i was doing prior you know most weekends every weekend i think for the most part in local bars and pubs in my um local area that i live in and then of course being a fan of dance music i was a bit of a techno tourist which allowed me to go to various places across europe Berlin, frankfurt barcelona madrid paris um, loads of other places to basically go and see some of the best teachers in the world playing some of the best clubs in the world and um, it was a big part of my life I think a lot of people can attest to this right um, when you're when you're a clubber when you're a fan of dance music when you're a fan of electronic music um, going to the clubs and going to see your favorite DJ play or going to just come you know um, socialize with your little community your little um, subculture you know for lack of a better term is part and parcel of being into something right you don't just and i'm thinking a lot of people would just listen to the music and just keep it like that you want to go to at least a couple of shows right whatever it may be right and you know maybe a, a couple of yearly pilgrimages to places like Berkheim will be included but for the most part just your local scene is good enough right you want to see local acts you want to see international acts come over brilliant 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 but of course with covid that's been completely kind of you know off the table for the best part of a year or so um a regular event anyway we've had obviously some sort of covid safe type of events popping up here and there in berlin they had this weird sort of like open air thing going on you know they've kind of have a bit of a culture out there with open air parties which are essentially just raves and parties that are happening in beer gardens um they have those sort of set up in most places so most venues are able to kind of um utilize their spaces in that way and um, of course berlin summers are beautiful so you can kind of get away with it a bit more but some of the effects around it were a bit dicey especially when you consider the fact that <clears throat> a lot of the governments weren't necessarily um taking as, as as serious an approach with covid as they probably should have in the summer to kind of stem the flow which is why we're all basically in some version of a lockdown in most parts of like you know western europe for the most part of it but people sort of kind of let that be because you're outside you know whatever it may be you know um supposedly the virus doesn't spread too easily outdoors you've got a face covering on blah 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 but it's been a while since i've been to a rave right the last rave purpose the last actual rave i went to in london was maybe seeing gerd jansen at xoyo in europe obviously i went to see i went to Berkheim to see um Nazir and a few other people play and uh sound stream a few other people I think it might have been in February but that's the last actual party I've been to and obviously since then people have been throwing loads of illegal raves here and there um and it's been a bit of an issue it's obviously been a bit of an issue because of the whole playgrave situation which essentially stemmed from a hashtag online I guess maybe uh made popular by business techno people or business techno group of people on that kind of anonymous platform where they're sort of highlighting very i would say people that you would deem to be affluent djs deciding to play in these far-flung places around the world um inevitably you know prolonging the spread of covid and the amount of time we're spending on the lockdown and inevitably when they left their location where they're playing at the numbers you know continue to spike which again whether or not you can attribute it directly to this person playing in that location who knows but in terms of optics and in terms of um global compliance it probably wasn't the best option or best way to go about things whatever and it kind of stopped it felt like towards the summer the playground thing stopped a lot of the reason why it stopped in my opinion is i think that um, instagram removed the ability for you to search geotag search instagram stories which is the way a lot of people got a hold of the clips and the videos from people attending these play graves a lot of people wouldn't upload a video or clip of them at a party on their main instagram feed so they'll probably upload it onto the instagram stories and then geotag location or geo yeah geotag yeah geolocation tag their post so if you wanted to check whatever if somebody was at flipping i don't know else club in berlin right or uh, cause here in London you just search for it and then go through the Instagram stories Instagram go through the Instagram stories but somehow 
I don't know why they decided to remove it, but supposedly I heard it was because of the election. I'm not too sure. But for some reason, they decided to remove that feature from Instagram. So that sort of, I felt like, stemmed the flow of footage. So a lot of DJs could kind of get away with it. And of course, being publicly shamed, led to a lot of people sort of hiding the fact that they were playing in places and sort of pretending they weren't playing places, just not posting them online. But there seems to be a really weird, perverse need for DJs to share where they're playing, which I don't really understand. And it's inevitably leading to a lot of beef online with a lot of people, right? People are getting really upset that DJs are basically playing in these mad locations uh, during a global pandemic. And um, a recent event happened actually for New Year's Eve, two events, one, I guess one illegal, one semi-legal. The first legal event was in Ukraine. They had like a special New Year's Day uh, ray from the 1st of Jan up to the next year to basically the 2nd of January and they enlisted the support and the help of a whole bevy of Berlin based DJs some Ukrainian based DJs and maybe a couple of UK peeps but for the most part most of the people that I see on that lineup were based in Berlin and stuff and one of the people that basically got called out for some of his kind of um somewhat tone deaf responses was somebody that who I rate a lot right um techno producer and DJ Blauan and he essentially got his Instagram stories and decided to complain about uh, his um I guess flights leaving Ukraine and coming back to Berlin or back to wherever he lives so this is a post here for business test note it says the following this is a screenshot from Blauan's Instagram profile of him taking a picture of an airline and then writing the following on top he says I've been illegally refused to travel because a lot of airways believe cause of COVID I cannot transit in Poland your staff were rude I bought a new ticket you saw my UK passport you took my money then immediately refused to give me a boarding pass because of Brexit quote unquote he says disgusting I have a legal right to travel freely in Europe Europe um, until June two, 2021 clearly you tra under train your staff and of course he added a lot LOT airlines and fly a lot as well on there so kind of doing what most DJs do in their general everyday life outside of COVID complain about airlines right um, it's sort of a bit of a humble flex but I guess going through a global pandemic it comes across very tone deaf you know very, you're not kind of um, reading the room too good and of course the fact that you're playing anyway during a global pandemic is just probably not the smartest thing to be posting on your Instagram stories um, and then on the next screen we have an image that looks like somebody reached out to him somebody called FMT1 and basically replied to his story and basically said the following playing a gig during a pandemic while thousands of people die and then cry that you can't fly home is pathetic which it generally is and then you know Blauen decided to do the most mature thing which was you know put an emoji of a middle finger on there got to the person to fuck herself and said that they know nothing and in the next screen here, we have um, to the people sending messages that I'm disgraced and disgusting for playing a show just so I don't have to give you the venom back. I will not apologize. I'm not sorry. The party was absolute fucking fire. You know nothing of my circumstances, so keep it to yourself. And um, I guess that is somewhat true. I think we don't know his circumstances, right? He could be on his last tenor euro whatever it may be and he you know doesn't receive any benefits from the government or no grants whatever it may be he's supporting a family and he just has to do what he has to do to kind of make sure the lights are on he's you know food on his table roof over his head whatever it may be cool um i think most people are mature enough to understand that people are having to do what they need to do to support themselves in a way in any way that they can during this pandemic especially um considering the um, lackluster um, approach some governments have taken to dealing with COVID and you know uh, supporting people in creative industries and people that work in hospitality people that work in you know in a freelance capacity it's just been difficult right to kind of make sure that you're keeping your head above water so if somebody presents you an opportunity to make some money even during a global pandemic which you know you probably shouldn't do I can understand the uh, um, desire to probably do it or you know wanting to do it regardless right even if you have the money again because I, I, I think pocket watching people is weird I just think there is an element of like civic duty there is an element of like um, I wouldn't say was it morals even ethics whatever it may be where you would hope that part of the reason why you got into this obviously was to make money and make a living but part of the reason was for you to kind of 
you know, dance to celebrate with your global community of fans of the electronic and dance music scene, right? Um, and not having the ability to see or connect with all your fans, right, at a set time in an actual legit nightclub with people coming and all that sort of stuff isn't necessarily what you want anyway, right? It's sort of like my thinking behind, like, when everyone was doing these sort of, like, weird um gigs at restaurants no, restaurants were these sort of like where we had in the uk we had basically i think they had it in the cause where you could basically book a table it's sort of like your own little section you sort of made sure everyone there was covid secure and keeping their distance blah blah blah, blah. and then you just were not able to stand and dance and the dj played in the corner and again it's not the best experience not really what i would call a rave or it's not conducive at all to anything that i'm interested in whatsoever but you got the appeal you understood the need for fans to go and you know socialize with their friends and for DJs to play music right because that's what they've known for the best part of 10 plus years right so it makes complete sense but even that was a little bit I thought counterproductive to the idea of us kind of understanding the severity of the issue that we're in because I think that's what basically happens is that I'm not a fan of lockdowns I don't think they work I think they only work in the beginning of a pandemic right in terms of actually stem the tide of people going to hospitals but then there is something to be said for limiting the amount of, I guess, leisure activities people get up to. So people understand the severity of the issue, take it seriously, lock in place for a short period of time so that we can open up and don't have to close back down again. Because I think that opening and closing has essentially led to the position that we're in now where people are fatigued, whether it's the artists and the customers and the clients are willing to put themselves at risk, go to these events and play. DJs are willing to fly across the country a fly across you know europe to go and play somewhere like ukraine um just so they can make sure that they pay next next month's rent because you know landlords aren't pausing their rent because of a global pandemic um you know bills need to get paid because you no know, they're not gonna give you um any sort of grace in that period maybe a month or so but we're now what close to 10 months into um living under some sort of restrictions with the with covid19 so again i understand it I just think it would be beneficial if a lot of these guys just didn't post anything online. Again, like I said, this event happened in Ukraine on the 2nd of January, as you can see here from the screen. Um, a whole host of DJs played. Again, the, I don't know how you pronounce the name of this club in Ukraine, but it's really well known. Um, and look at the people that played here, right? Uh, Dior, Blauan, Crombie, Freddie K, right? Somebody who you'd probably expect a bit better from, right? Uh, Gail, Nastya Vogan, uh, Rasid, Renny Wise, Sally C, Sedef Ad, uh, Adasi, um, Tita, and VTSS, right? Loads of people that you're full familiar with, especially from Berlin, um, especially just from the scene in general. And none of them got involved in any sort of public scandal because they just kept it stum, did their gig, got paid their money and kept it moving. But Blauen went to kind of, you know, um, jump out the window, complain about a connecting flight and try to lecture an airline about uh, Brexit procedure and essentially got himself in a whole heap of trouble online. Again, it's not that big of a deal, but it just paints a bad picture, I think, for the scene overall. I think we're all sort of suffering, right? We're all sort of bemoaning the fact that we aren't able to go and celebrate and do the things that we want to do outside um, in the dance music scene any with capacity. And um, we all would love to do that in some regards, but we kind of have to, I guess, um, pause on it a little bit and wait for things to open up and get a bit safe before we can do that again. And it's odd as well, because I think, I can't think of any other industry in the entertainment uh, or in the arts that's so that add that's as entitled as people in the dance music scene, which is odd, isn't it? Because you always think it's a little bit more egalitarian, hippie, all about people. I don't know what it is, but why is it that DJs think that they have the I won't say the right, but they have they just they should be playing at in at all cost when I guess your local band that you know and love that plays in your local pub around the corner probably haven't played in front of a proper audience for probably close to a year right legitimately because they can't just go and play like a random covid or plague um concert it doesn't exist but play graves are a big thing i wonder what it is about djs again maybe it's you know it's the ease of maneuver uh maneuverability right you can basically you know as long as you've got a pair of headphones and a usb you can play literally everywhere um and i'm guessing if you're in a less developed country like the places in south america everyone's going to play at the moment you can maybe 
get yourself a bit of a bargain and get someone really big and popular to play in your country that would never play because they don't have any other gigs and they're desperate for the money and desperate for playing time. But it's just, I find it very odd. I just, that's the only thing I find bizarre. Like, why is it that DJs are the ones that are hell bent on making sure that they play when people in bands haven't played for time? Like, why is that a thing? Um, and why is that also acceptable? Why do people sometimes think that's okay? Again, uh, depending on the country you're in, you know, the support system might not be there. There's no grants. There's no way for you to kind of earn a living outside of actually going to play someone, which again is a bit of an issue. Um, but again, in the beginning, it was all the affluent people playing. Now it's kind of people do you feel like need the money again. I'm not speaking in people's pockets. I don't know what everyone's finances is. But you get a feeling these people need the money to kind of keep their head above water. So there's less of a stick on them, but let's 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 hazard a guess if this list didn't include everyone that people sort of like in a scene people have a lot of love for right of course minus blauan because he's kind of um you know made a bit of a tit of himself but if this included people like nina kravitz charlotte dewitt amelie lens bless madonna peggy goo what people be saying online they'd be having a lot of shit to say about them so i think people need to keep the, the same energy i don't think you should be going to raves anyway during a global pandemic you should be keeping yourself as safe as you can making sure you stop the spread of covid wherever you may live so we can all get back to raving in some sort of um regular scheduled time frame right the last thing that i want to be doing is dancing on a table somewhere tapping my feet i want to be in an actual dark dingy underground basement bar or club wherever it may be rocking out to somebody playing in a corner um redlining the flipping sound system that's what i would like but we all have to kind of be in this together we kind of all have to you know um do away with the need to sort of party regardless of what we may do on our own regard and kind of get around the idea of like hey if we kind of chip in and make sure that we sort of keep in place and be as safe as we can for now that we could all kind of go back to raving very very soon but again shout out to blauan for being a bit of a weapon <laughs> shout out to you mate you kind of fucked yourself there didn't you mate you fucked yourself everyone else played didn't get any stick but you decided to complain about a connect and fly and now you got people on twitter trying to cancel you and shit uh, oh some of these guys are comp like I, I wonder sometimes like, maybe it's the just the time spent in the dj booth just listening to stuff so loud right um playing some of the best clubs you know on gear every time every weekend just surrounded by absolute you know slurpees it kind of maybe detaches you from real life you don't necessarily have an idea how to conduct yourself in a normal world because some of these things that these guys do you're like why would you be so dumb to post stuff like that just keep it to yourself keep it moving like god almighty but again what do i know